There's three major new features in FlyQ6. The first one is what we call the Global Digital Mapping System. As you can see from the picture on the left side of the screen, this is a new thing for us insofar as the maps can be generated digitally from a global database. If you take a look at that picture, you'll see the same image displayed two different ways using our split screen function. On the left hand side, you see what the new dynamic or what, the, what we call the digital maps do. They get rid of all the clutter in the background. They have very bright colors to show you different classes of airspace. Colored for, for example, red uh, means a prohibited or restricted area. A MOA would be orange and so on. On the right hand side, you see a traditional sectional. That's actually the exact same view. But the big thing, of course, is that the text is right side up when you're taking a look at the new digital map. This makes it much easier to see, much easier to navigate, much clearer to navigate. And unlike the, a conventional static map, like the one on the right, it means that as you zoom in and out, text layers and graphic layers can appear and disappear, making it automatically declutter. Easier to read, let you focus on what's important. Also new in FlyQ6 is a global weather system. Not only do you get all the weather layers that you're used to from the existing FlyQ EFB, now in most of the world, for example here in Europe, you also get radar imagery, satellite imagery, METARs and TAFs, winds aloft and surface winds, icing and turbulence that you can control with the altitude slider and the time slider, lightning and air mets and segments. FlyQ6 also expands considerably on the alerting system that we have for terrain and obstacle avoidance. In particular, we're now adding airspace alerts. As you can see on the picture on the screen, the airspace alerts work whether you're using the new digital map on the left or if you're using one of the scan charts, for example, in this case, a sectional on the right hand side. So you can also see that the airspace alerts are color coded to the airspace that they belong to. For example, on the left hand side of the screen, we're approaching class D airspace, which in the digital map is colored in sort of a teal. On the other hand, on the right hand side, we're approaching a prohibited area. In this case, we're using bright red, indicating warning, before you go into the prohibited area. In addition to the text pop-ups, we've also added for the first time audible, which is to say spoken alerts. So for example, as you're approaching Class D airspace, FlyQFB quite literally says approaching Class D airspace. You can configure, by the way, if you want audible warnings or text-based warnings or both in settings. There are a number of other features in FlyQ6 as well. One of the most common requests is to cleanly synchronize flight plans created, no matter how they're created, between iPads, iPhones, and FlyQ Online. Previously, this worked in some cases, but not all. Now, no matter how you decide to create your flight plan, and no matter how you decide to edit your flight plan, it's available to all your devices anywhere. Another popular request that we put into this product, because we know that many people fly more than one aircraft, is the ability from an ADSB perspective to mask out, that is to hide, more than one tail number. Previously, if you had an ADSB out system, you could tell FlyQ to ignore your tail number, but only one of them. Now you can tell it to, to ignore as many tail numbers as you like. In keeping with the theme on increasing the mapping system, we've also made the mapping system itself quite a bit faster, and we fixed a number of bugs and made a number of small improvements. And now, let me show it to you. Digital maps. We're all familiar with the standard sectional, like what's on the screen right now. Of course, with a sectional, or with an IFR high or an IFR low chart, the text is completely readable and completely usable, providing that you have the map face up. The problem, of course, is that when you fly, you often want to use what's called track up mode, which you can do in FlyQ by tapping a button on the screen. The problem, of course, is that now we are no longer hitting north, but hitting in a somewhat diagonal fashion, so all the text is at a funny angle and difficult to read. The solution to this is, of course, to use a system that doesn't rely on a scan chart, a pre-composed chart like this, but a digital chart. So to enable that in the product, tap the layers pop-up like this, and you notice in the upper left side on maps, there's a new item at the top called digital. I'll select the digital chart. And now I will deselect the VFR chart. I'll explain why in a second and tap off the screen. At this point, I'm going to zoom out a little bit. I see a number of items on the screen. These are all airports. The green are controlled airports and the magentas are uncontrolled airports for the most part. The interesting thing, of course, is that now all the text is straight up. We can do more than airports, however. A new button appears on the left hand side on the map bar. At the very bottom, it looks like a four segment uh, connected square. If I tap on that, I can control the layers on my screen, the digital layers. So for example, I can add navates to the screen. 
I can add waypoints. I can add airspace. And I can add airways as well. So in this way, you can create a what's called a vector map or a digital map that is generated by FlyQ on the fly, as it were. So it's generated from a computerized worldwide global database. So you're no longer restricted to what you'd see in a sectional. As an example of this, I'm going to go into split screen view. This is now the same view on both sides of the screen. Clearly, the sectional on the right-hand side has a, is a lot more difficult to read than the digital map on the left-hand side. This is more, even more apparent when you were to switch to maybe an IFR chart. So for example, on the left-hand side where I have the digital, I'm going to actually overlay, because this is something that the digital map allows, the digital with the IFR low chart. So let me pop off. Now at this point, it looks pretty much the same. You just see a white chart, which is a standard IFR low chart, and you see some um, airports and nav aids on the screen. If I were to deselect the digital, that's what the paper one looks like. On the left-hand side, you can see a standard paper IFR low chart with text, which is, of course, difficult to read because it's wrong side up. But if I were to also overlay the digital map on top of it, you can now see much more clearly where the fixes are, the nav aids, the airports, the airways, and so on. This is also particularly important and particularly helpful if you were to use a type of map that is really not made for aviation. So, for example, I'm going to switch this to roads, so I now have both the digital map and the roads layer on at the same time. In fact, just to make this more clear, I'm going to switch out of split screen mode into single screen mode by hitting the splitter at the top of the screen. So now at this point, I have what is effectively my own private aviation map. I can take a look at a road layer, a satellite layer, anything like this, and superimpose on it actual airspace information. So in this way, you also have the ability to have the system automatically clutter and declutter the screen. So as I moved out, notice that certain elements of the graphics display turned off because they were too cluttered to read near in. And then other elements, when you zoom in, become visible. Now again, you can do this in either an overlay fashion here where the digital map is overlaid on top of another one, or if you turn off the, all the other layers and just leave the digital one on, at this point, you have strictly a digital map with a very clear, very simple background color. And you can make this as complicated or as simplified as you like. So for example, maybe just leave on nav aids and airports. Now if I zoom in, that is exactly what I see. I see a nav aid at KPDX, Portland. Like this, that's the airport. I see the nav aids next to it. I see the battleground BTG nav aid and so on. And of course, as I rotate the screen, all the text stays straight up like that. That is what a digital map is useful for. Global weather. Global weather is another feature that's new to FlyQ6. Right now we're looking at the continental United States with a number of different weather layers on. Let's take a look. If you take a look at the middle column weather, we have radar turned on, we have meters and TAFs, winds aloft, turbulence, icing, can also put on surface winds and many other layers as well. You can use the altitude slider in the corner here to see what the winds aloft and icing are like at different altitudes and so on. That's standard in FlyQ5. However, with FlyQ6, we now have the ability to look at a much wider region, specifically the entire world. So if I were to change my map settings, we just zoom out a little bit. I'm now seeing turbulence all over the world. I see lightning all over the world. Begin to see winds aloft at different altitudes all over the world and so on, icing and more. So for example, this is in Europe. I will for the time being though turn off maybe the turbulence just so you can take a look at the map a little bit more clearly. But that's in England right across the English Channel. We're now looking at France. So now I'm taking a look at the map from a global perspective. If I were to tap on the green circles, which in this case are the METARs and TAFs, I see in fact the METARs and TAFs for those airports. Also, by the way, I can double tap and take a look at the airport itself, and I see information about the airport available there too. So with FlyQ6, we're take, we've taken a number of steps to take a look at weather and navigational data from a global perspective. 
airspace alerts. FlyQ has always had the ability to warn you when you're entering an area that has high terrain or where there's an obstacle. Now we also warn you when you're about to enter or even come close to controlled airspace such as MOAs, prohibited, restricted, class B, class C, danger, alert, and so on. Again, and I want to stress this, you don't have to actually be intercepting it. If you're close to it, we're going to warn you about that. The alerts are in both pop-up text and with audible warnings. Approaching a MOA. Once the alert is on the screen, you can tap on the X to close it down, like that. Or you can also, if you'd prefer not to see either the text or the audible pop-up, you can go into settings and configure the alerts however you like them to be. In terms of airspace alerts, keep in mind that the system uses a color-coded system on the pop-up as well. The pop-ups appear regardless of which type of map you use. For example, I'm going to display a split-screen mode now. And now you can see that the highlight is on both the sectional on one side of the screen and also on the digital chart on the other side of the screen. This is particularly important when you're using a map that, for example, the road map, that may not include any aviation data at all. A reminder that FlyQ has two other types of warnings as well. For example, one of them has to do with terrain avoidance. If you tap on the layers pop-up and select TAWS, the terrain becomes colored. The red means that the terrain elevation is above your current altitude. The yellow means danger, that you're within a thousand feet of it. Also, you can turn on obstacle avoidance where you see obstacles on the screen. And now you also see that there's a pop-up on the screen that says at the top left, alert, obstacle ahead. You also, if we zoom in a little bit here, you see, I'm going to turn off the TAWS for a moment. You see that there's a red cone. The red cone in front of the aircraft is telling us that the obstacle alert is based on any obstacle that is within that pie-shaped wedge. So it looks ahead and looks to the left and to the right, looking for obstacles. So. It isn't just airspace warnings, although airspace warnings are what's new in this product. You have terrain warnings, you have obstacle warnings, and you have airspace warnings, all built into FlyQ EFB.